Hello, in this lecture we're going to calculate some smaller test type problems, problems that could be small enough to fit in a multiple choice type question. So what we have here is a company provides employee health insurance that costs $14,000 per month. In addition, the company contributes an amount equal to 3% of the employee's $140,000 gross salary to a retirement program. The entry to record the accrued benefits for the month would be what? So we got to figure out what the total accrued benefits are, both of the thing, these things being benefits, including the health insurance that we're providing, we're helping to provide, and the retirement plan, like a 401k plan. So we have to accrue those, meaning we're going to have a liability for them. And so they, they gave us the amount of health insurance, just 14000 So we got to figure out the amount of the retirement plan, so we're going to have gross income. And this would be part of basically the payroll process, 140000 and then we've got the rate, 3% here. So I'm going to put that in as 0 0.03, enter. And then, of course, I'm going to change the formatting, home tab, numbers. I'm going to make that a percent, like so. 3%, I'm going to go ahead and underline, home tab, font, underline, and then multiply that out. We're going to say it's the 14,000 times the 3%, and that gives us the amount of contribution to the retirement plan. Contribute. John. And then we're going to have the health insurance. I'm just going to put health insurance of the 14,000. I'm going to go ahead and underline that. Home tab, font group, underline. And then we're going to add those together. So this equals the 4,002 plus the 14,000. This would be the total amount to be accrued. And what does it mean to be accrued? Of course, it would be, it would be some kind of uh, benefits liability that would be the accrued. So the account would be accrued benefits or something like that. And we're going to say 18,2. And then we're going to debit something. That would be a liability account. And the debit would include the 18-2. And that would be included in the payroll employee wages. And so it would be part of the long payroll journal entry that we would have. Basically, this money coming out of the W-2 income of the employees in this process. Next one says that a company has a selling price of 1500 each for its inventory. Each unit has a two-year warranty that covers replacement of defective parts. It is estimated that 3% of all units sold will be returned under the warranty at an average price, average cost of $144 each. During November, the company sold 24,000 units and 340 units were serviced under the warranty at a total cost of 47,000. The balance in the estimated warranty liability account at November 1st was 26,000. What is the company's warranty expense for the month of November? So in order to do these warranty type problems, we need to understand that under the matching principle, we're going to try to estimate what the warranty cost will be at the time of sale. Because the idea is that we sold those kind of goods that were faulty in the, the point of sale and had therefore incurred the liability at that time at the point of sale, even though we're going to service them in the future. So for example, if we're talking about November here, then if we're talking about the expense for November, we want to talk about the expense related to the sales that happened, not the expense related to the warranties that we serviced. The expense related to the warranties that we serviced, we had already estimated what that would be in the past related to the sales in the past. So here we have a, a company has a selling price. Uh, we sold, in this case, uh, during November, 24,000 units. So units uh, sold are 24,000 units. And we think that of those 24,000 units, there's going to be a problem with 3% of them. So the percent that will have warranty is 0 0.03 costs to them. If I go to the home tab, if I go to the number group and we add decimals, 0 0.03 or percent, 0 0.03, I'm going to go ahead and underline home tab font underline. So that's going to be the amount of the 24000 that we think are already kind of faulty right there. We already basically incurred that cost, and therefore we should be recording it at this point in time related to the same point in time that we sold those 24000 units. Therefore, we're going to say of the 24000 times 3%, we have 720 uh, of those units that will be serviced. These are units that will be serviced. And then of those, we think that it's going to cost an average of 144 per unit. So we're going to go to uh, the home tab, font, underline. And so we're going to say of the 720 that we're going to have to service under warranty, 
we think it's going to cost on average 144 and that's going to be 103,680. So therefore, when we record the warranty expense, we're going to debit warranty expense of 103,680 in November for in relation to the sales that happen until in November of these 24,000. Now, note that that's different than in in the fact that we didn't actually service those in November. In November, we actually serviced the 340 units were serviced in November and, and had a cost of of the 47. But that that is not relevant to the income statement here. It's not relevant to the expense because we had already estimated that in the past. So the answer here for the expense for November is 103,680. Next one says that on April 12th, company agrees to accept a 60-day 8% 5,700 note from B company to extend the due date on the overdue account. What is the journal entry needed to record the payment of the note by B company on the maturity date? We're going to use 360 days in a year, although there's 365, 360 is even. That's why a lot of times we're going to basically take a look at the 360, which is just basically 12 times 30 days, 12 times 12 months times 30 okay so we're gonna have to calculate the interest so what happens here we converted the receivable to a note then the note became due and now we need to record the receipt of the payment on the note so we're gonna get paid on the note after the due date therefore we got to calculate the interest over that time period that was earned basically kind of like rent on the note so we're gonna have the note the note was on the books four five seven there was a rate interest rate of the 8%, which is 0 0.08 if we move the decimal point over two places. So if we go to the home tab, we go to the numbers group and I add decimals, it's 0 0.08. Or if we go to the percent, 8%. If I go and underline it, home tab, font, underline, then we can multiply this out. So we have the 5.7 times 8%. This would be interest for a year. And note, this is a key point. We want to keep pointing this out whenever it comes up here. Whenever we say 8%, we basically mean 8% a year. Just like when we talk about salary and we say we're going to pay someone 70000 we mean 70000 a year most likely. So that's, that's the assumption. And the idea here is just like if we were talking about salary, well, we're going to pay you every two weeks. Then we need to break this down from a yearly to whatever days that uh, it has been covered. So instead of 360 days, we got to break it down to 60. So we could do it by month or we could do it by um, days because obviously uh, 60 days would be two months. So we could divide by 12 and break it out into a monthly total or we can do it by days, break it out into a daily total. So let's do it by days because that's what they're indicating here. So we're going to say that if that is uh, for a year, we're going to say, okay, days in a year. How did they come up to 360? Well, they said, let's just take in 12 months times an even 30. That's where they're coming up with that 360. And then we go to the home tab font underline and then if we divide that out then we're going to say this is how much it would cost for a year for interest divided by 360 days in a year this would be int and if i go to the home tab the uh numbers and we add decimals notice it's not even there that's okay because the the excel will calculate based on what it really is and, and uh, calculate that. Now, if you do it by a calculator, you could have some rounding difference. So this is gonna be interest per day. So we have interest per day, and then we have days of note, which were, in this case, 60 days. So 60 days of the note. So if we underline that, home tab, font, underlined, then we're gonna have the interest will be this amount per day times 60 days, and we're gonna have the uh, 76 interest on the note. Therefore, if we paid off the note then, how much, how much are we going to receive? We're going to get cash, and the cash is going to be equal to the 5.7 plus the interest that we earned on the note. We're going to get the 5.776. Then we got to take the note payable, which, which is a receivable for us. We, they owed us money. It was a receivable. It has a debit balance. We got to take it off the book, so we got to credit the receivable for, and we got to credit for the 5.7. That's what it was on there for, not including the interest. And then we have interest revenue or income. And that's going to be a credit because we earned it. And we also, of course, need a credit in order for this to bounce out. It's going to be that 76. We can also use our plug formula. If I, if I make this credits a negative, then I can use my negative sum formula, summing up the debits and the credits, flipping the sign, and we get that 76. So now the debits minus the credits equals zero. We are in balance at that point. 
Now, just so you know, obviously, if we were at this point of the calculation here, 456, and we divided by 12 months here, instead of breaking it out to days, but by months, because we have nice even months, and we said this divided by 12 months, that would be the amount per month. Again, there could be rounding issues here. In this case, it's even. And then we multiply that times two months. And so we say 38 times two, because 60 days is two months. And uh, if you'd rather see things in terms of months instead of in terms of days, most problems that when you're talking about textbooks, problems will accommodate that.